Welcome everyone to Two Grown Men doing a podcast in their room. Woo! It is podcast number two. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. And it's going good. We're back. We're back. Unfortunately, we live together, so there's kind of no getting away. Tony keeps asking me to do it every day, and so we're finally doing it. But we're going to have we're going to try to have a new podcast out every single week. We've gotten good feedback. We've received good feedback from the last one. Thank you everyone for listening. We're glad that you enjoy our completely idiotic conversations yes i didn't think anybody else would want to listen to us talk but yeah apparently a handful of them do apparently a handful of you are clinical sociopaths <laughs> congratulations you have now been diagnosed in, in if news, you're listening to this it's too late yeah <laughs> so what's been going on elias just got his mcat scores back He's like, I didn't want that to be shared. Yeah. Welcome I won't to, say any. Welcome to two grown men talking about Eliza's life. <laughs> no, That's okay. I won't. No, no, no. I won't share anything else. I, I will say, the top one percent. That's all I'll say. No, things are, things are good. Things are going good. He uh, got in the top one percent. All right. That, I'm not gonna say anything, but the, Elias doesn't like talking about indication. himself, but I do. No. I'm Elias's biggest fan. Talk about this. It's, I don't know if that's sad or encouraging. Positive, encouraging, finish it. You haven't heard that? No. There's a radio station called K Love. It's a Christian radio station. Okay. And it's like positive, encouraging K Love. And it's just like the most. <laughs> I hated it because it's all so my mom sexual. would listen to in the car. She, my mom would never play any other music. My, I would no, no, I would try to play my CDs in the car, and she'd be like, "Get this!" She like, <laughs> get if this got, devil music. Yeah, seriously. Oh my god, the only music that she would play in the car was Christian music, and I, mm. and it was awful because I started hating Christian music because I was like, "All these songs sound the fucking same," and it was just like. You know, like, I, pl- I and I was younger, I would play Creed all the time. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, there's still Creed fans out there. And I would <laughs> I would be in the car, I was like nine years old, and I would put their, like, CDs in, and my, it would get, it would, the, the, it would barely, it would, like, bar- the, the volume would barely be up. You'd mm-hmm. barely be able to hear anything. Mm-hmm. And, like, the guitars would come in, and she'd be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> turn this down. <laughs> Dude. It sounds like you've been scarred, Tony. It sounds like this is dude, traumatizing another, your childhood. Dude, no. Another thing my mom would do in the car. Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, things my mom did in the car. <laughs> but, dude, she would get... When I was younger, my mom and I would like would, would fight a lot just because I was a boy going through menopause. And it was just, you know, a lot of conflicting testosterones happening, right? So we would just fight in the car all the time. I thought I was hot shit. My mom was like, you're not, you know, I was like, what do you know? You you don't understand the young angst, you know? Yeah. So we would fight all the time in the car. And I noticed that when she would get mad at me, she would speed up. The car (laughs) would go so much faster if we were fighting. So if I was late for school one day or or anything, (coughs) Morty, or anything (laughs) like that, I would just be like, hey, mom, your hair looks like shit today. And she'd just be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. That explains a, a lot about you, Tony, man. Really? Yeah, just like. You start picking me apart psychologically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, did you have any problems with your father growing up? Well, I. Uh... Do you ever feel like maybe you're your own father? Okay, Oh, <laughs> maybe you just don't want to become your father. Oh, it's no. happening, dude. You first, you shave your head, dude. Everyone looks in the mirror and is just like, "Is that my dad?" <laughs> dude, I'm looking more like my father every day, and it's terrifying. Hey, back to the radio thing, though. In Chattanooga, we don't have Caleb. We have uh, J103. So it's like this annoying J103. J103. So it's like shining the light. <laughs> J one zero three. I just like you know what? <laughs> it's dude, it's been there since I was like four years old living yeah. in Chattanooga. This has been around for forever. And my mom's the same thing, same as you. Like we're we basically have the same like upbringing. Yeah. Just that's the only radio station that was ever on, and it's just you know, it's traumatized me, man. Dude, there's just like, I would, my music career I know would hit an all time low if that's what I'm doing is making radio intros. I right, Tony, we need a hit song now. We need it fast. And I'm like, ah, 105.6, the hits. Uh, perfect. Send it. Cut it. Ship it. You know, like, 
Like, when that's my life, that's when I know musically I've hit a low point. I need to do some reassessing. Not that this, like, discourage any radio. But, but who musically is this, like, what do you want to do musically? Like, do you want to do, you want to do like, you know, hip-hop? Do you want to sell out stadiums? Like, like what do you want to do? Do you want to, like, inspire the youth? I'm now, just really into radio slogans, man. <laughs> I'm just real into radio intros. I think it's God's calling on my life. Yeah, yeah. Just, man, at least he'll be on the radio. Think about that. That's at least true. they're always on the radio. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Dude, I hate when there's some commercials that have singing, but it's like clearly the guy's granddaughter who didn't know <laughs> how to sing that well. And she was just like, Daddy, can I sing on your commercial? And he's just like, ah, sh- anything for you, sweetie. And it's just it's like, you know, a fucking business for fucking rugs or some shit. And it's just like, we are the rock star and you're like oh god what is this seriously you know what this reminds me of what during the trump campaign when he had the girls oh, singing oh, america oh land of the free of he the didn't brain. pay them you know he didn't pay them <laughs> yeah because they were his granddaughters them. dude no they weren't yeah <laughs> no yeah no they weren't i don't know man but like i would you have paid them if they had sung for your campaign he asked them to. But he became a living meme off of them, dude. It's like... Well, it just looked so 1985. I mean, he was a living meme before that. Yeah, it, it just looked so like... <laughs> it looked like Hitler's youth was up there just like, <laughs> America! Like, are you serious? Like, 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 what the fuck am I watching? Like, what is this? Oh. <sighs> All right, before we get too heated up, we promised ourselves that we would be a little bit more concise this time. So... We are moving on to the first segment. Oh, the first segment, ladies and gentlemen. Podcast. Hold on. The first segment, which we're going to say off the top of our heads, is, is the, the cost, cost is, is correct. correct. It's like the price is right, but we don't want to get sued. <laughs> Both Elias and I will pick four. Well, each of us will pick two weird random items. And each of us have to guess their price. Let's get it going. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle up. Because it's about to get weird. <laughs> that was by ba- far my favorite quote from the but, last podcast. Yeah, I, I, I notice I've been saying that a lot more too. Like, not doing anything. I'll just, I'll be talking to someone. I'm like, all right, buckle up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta prep them, dude. You gotta prep them for something like this. Yeah, you like just this. gotta you gotta buckle up. Dude, the name of the podcast should be Buckle Up. Nah, man. Two grown men, ladies and gentlemen. If you like it, leave a like. Two grown men buckling up. Two grown men buckling up, playing Ooh, Overwatch, uh, having <laughs> having sex, <laughs> having sex in their room, having sex in their room. That's it. That's it. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, we don't we don't want to add too much. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We can't. It, we, we don't, don't want to overdo it. We don't, <laughs> We're in, we're in a sweet spot right now. Yeah, with how we, long it is right now? Eighteen, we, eighteen <laughs> syllables. We want it to be. We want it to be half of a paragraph. It's the, it's the golden syllable count, ladies and gentlemen. Eighteen. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Like we said, like we said, each both Elias and I have two items. Neither of us know what the items are, but we're gonna tell each other the item, and we're gonna have to guess the price. So Elias, we'll go back and forth. You go one. I go one. You go one. I go one. All right. H- hence, that's how back and forth that's, works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back and forth. I'll go, and then you go. <laughs> you go and, then, and then it like goes back to me, and then... Yeah, yeah. Not to, but let right. me slow you down. <laughs> after I go, you will <laughs> go. Did you catch that? Can you say it after me? Welcome to two grown men going back and forth in a podcast <laughs> in a room. <laughs> All right. Welcome to two grown men going back and forth. <laughs> oh, God. All okay. Right. Elias, you go first. Uh, my, my item, my item. The my. first item I have is actually called... To catch a cheater, uh-huh. right? and first of all, I'll try to guess what it is. To catch a cheater, it's called the a... first thing I think of is like some sort of thing you put on a man's dick <laughs> that will like change colors. Like the, no, no, no. Think about this. It's something that you put in. Like okay, so if you're the girlfriend, you put this chemical in the dude's underwear, okay. and then if he has sex with someone else, like that chemical will rub on his dick, and then that night when he's asleep, you look at his dick, and if it's like fucking purple, <laughs> then he's cheated on some. Uh, he's cheated on you. That's, if that's not a thing no, I just created. No, it's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's so much better than what it actually is. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh my god, we should patent that, dude. You heard here first, ladies and gentlemen. Catch a cheetah, ladies. Yeah, you have a bunch of people with purple penises. Yeah. What's a bar? Right. Catch a bunch of people, people with purple penises. <laughs> All right. Uh, it actually, it's actually though, it's just a, it's like a tracking device oh. that you can put inside of a car. 
Oh. It's like it's like the size of like uh, like three of your fingers next to each other. Okay. That's just a random measurement. But <laughs> <laughs> that's it's a, about the size of like gross. it's like the it's like half of two pickles. That's <laughs> that's the size. <laughs> like pickles. You like pickles. <laughs> It's a, it's half the size of two pickles. Okay. Um it is, it is. So you so you put um you put it inside the car and you just hide it somewhere. Like you just put it in like in the glove compartment or something. Yeah. And it's like a live t- like a live tracking of that person's location, like how fast the car goes, where they stop, like what addresses they like get off on. Huh. Yeah, and so it could be used for a lot of reasons, yeah. but it's called just like to catch a cheater, which I think is like limiting the audience. It also sounds like catchy. uh like a, a daytime soap opera. Think to about catch it. a cheater, or, yeah. or or one of those like AT. No, I'm thinking to catch a predator. That's the that's what I'm to thinking of. Yeah. Did you ever watch that? No. You know what? Fuck that show, and not because it was bad or anything. It wasn't. Okay. He, here's the premise of the show to catch a predator. <sighs> okay. Right. So the whole purpose was that they would like make these fake accounts of younger girls, like 14 or something years old, and then they would. And here's the issue. They would bait these like grown men. Okay, I'm uh, not making I'm not I'm not defending the fucking pedophiles. Okay. I'm just saying they like, "Hey, I'm Susan. I'm 14. I just moved to the neighborhood." And then, you know, Stan, you know, 36 is like, "Hey, I'm Stan. I, I'm also 14." <laughs> you know, they they would lie and then they'd be like, "Oh, well, let's meet up at like my house." And so that guy would show up and he'd be sitting in the kitchen and the girl would be like, "I'll be right down in a second. And then this guy named Chris Hansen would just walk in and be like, <laughs> "John?" And then he'd be like, or he'd be like, "Stan?" And he'd be like, "Yeah." And he goes, "Do you know why we're here?" Oh, did you bring, did you bring protection? Yeah. Perfect. The only bad news about that is you're probably not going to need that type of protection tonight. Yeah, just like that. And the dude's just sitting there like, uh. That's heavy. And, yeah, and you That's see it. these, the, 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 yeah. you know, he, the guy's terrifying. You're like, this guy probably has a family. Okay, yeah. but he's a fucking pedophile. Like, it's wrong, you know. But now it's on TV. And but so now it's on TV, so you're yeah. fucking this dude's life, you know. Yeah, I mean. And but but then some guys act stupid when he does that. They're like, oh, "Do you know why you're here?" And he goes, "Did you know Jessica was 14 when you talked to her?" And he goes, "Oh, I I didn't know. Like, oh, oh I, I didn't know that." Or they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah." And you, some guys are just like, "Damn, like, yeah," you know. No. And then there's some that run. And they have a SWAT <laughs> team waiting outside. Oh, yeah, like there's God. some dudes that just like they're like, he's like, you know. John? And then the guy just takes off out the door, and then the camera guys are following. It's looking, you know, to, you know and the next thing you know, he's on the ground with five police officers on top of him. But, uh, it becomes but, an episode of Cops. Dude, yeah. seriously. But fuck that show, because, like, it's to catch a predator, but they're just baiting everyone. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm not, again, not defending the pedophiles. Of course, yeah. But it's just, like, really, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how ethical that is. I don't even know if it's real. It might have been just all stage. Yeah, it probably it probably was. It was a huge show. It was in the '90s, early 2000s. It was yeah. huge. But I mean, think about it. if you just like on a like if you're on a schedule of like making an episode every week. That's true. There's not a lot of pedophiles. It's There's... just like the prank shows. Like you just got to make a video. Yeah. So like sometimes you just got to fake it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, ba- what are we talking about? <laughs> Back to the cost is correct. Back to pickles. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Catch a, a cheater. Rick. It's a tracker, dude. Yes. How much do you think this tracker costs? Honestly, I don't think it's that expensive. I'm gonna say twenty nine ninety nine, maybe thirty bucks. Yeah, we're talking live tracking. Serves up to fifty hours of of like no, no, location like what, what's data. What's the distance? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, it doesn't have a distance. I don't think. Okay, well, if it's like, oh, well, it's gonna go twenty yards away. <laughs> That's going to be like 15 bucks, but it's like, hey, this thing will catch it till Nebraska. I, I think you it know. Like does like the city. I think it does like a, like a city. Okay, like 100 meter yards. I don't know. I don't know the a yards. A city is definitely more it's than like 100 10, yards. It's like 10 Legos, it's 10 Lego <laughs> blocks. I don't know. <laughs> For, how like, many pickles? What? <laughs> Elias, tell me the length in pickles. Give me, yeah, give me some real data. Right? Yeah, give, <laughs> give me some quantitative. Give me some real news. I don't have fake news. Um, I would say, but see, I, I'm I what if, I'm right at thirty dollars, but then you just make me doubt. This is this cognitive yeah. no, you know, no no dissonance I, I just right now. I did it once doesn't mean I'll do it again. Okay, I did with Brain I'm Blast. saying it's it's probably at least forty bucks. All right, all right, Good. forty fifty. Forty bucks. bucks. We're gonna keep that. We're not gonna give the answer away because you have to stay tuned to find out. All right. So all then, right. now do I go? Yeah, go hit me with your turn. <clears throat> so, 
Now, when you're a hunter and you're out in them big, big old woods, and you're trying to catch some big old game, and I'm not talking a squirrel or a deer, I'm talking some big stuff. Something that Susan, your next door neighbor, will surely get your attention because we both know your marriage is fucked. So how you gonna do that? Well, come down to John Deere, pick up some bear piss. A bottle, an eight ounce bottle of bear piss. Do you know what this is used for? Yes. What? Shots. No. no. (laughs) Okay. So uh, some people know, but hunters, a lot of hunters... Uh, and a lot of Take, weir- a lot yeah, of weirdos condition their hair. Yeah, <laughs> put in their shampoo. Yeah. We'll put in their chili. You know, <laughs> but <laughs> they, they will u- depending on what they're hunting. They will or not hunting if they're just going out into the woods. Sometimes they will use uh, certain animals' urine to mask their scent because apparently God made all these woodland creatures with fucking superhuman smell. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's just like, I can smell you since you got out of your car. You smell like salami. You know, like, <laughs> that's how that's how bears sound, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you smell like your wife's going to leave you. You smell like, <laughs> <you smell like laughs> Stacy from next door. <laughs> smell like red lipstick and, and Chanel. And regret. You smell like a failed marriage. <laughs> These bears are very condescending. <laughs> hey, Phil, check this guy out. This fucker's... Hey, he's got nothing left. He's gonna fuck. He's pouring deer, fucking bear piss on himself. I, I, I smell, still smell that shit. But no, it's uh, they'll put it on to mask their scent so okay. they can better hunt. I got it. All right, my guess, my guess, yeah, is like eight ounces. Yeah, they're like twelve dollars. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. Yeah. You're not gonna like. All right. That's no, that's pretty good. All right. You want? Okay. Do you want to go? Let's ahead exchange and reveal now. It? Yeah. Okay. You go. All right. <clears throat> It'll just go. like two rounds. It's like two rounds. This round, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a hundred and fifty dollars. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was discounted from two hundred dollars. Initial retail price. I am ass at this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tony, you, you suck. suck. <laughs> yeah. Cover yourself in bear piss and just <laughs> and just run outside. <laughs> run outside. I'll give you a tracker. I'll know where you are. I'll pick you yes. up in the morning. But dude, that is super useful. I mean, I would. If I was like actually trying to track someone, like my kid. Yeah, like, I was thinking. I was thinking that. I was like, you wouldn't, like, but you wouldn't want to let them know, like you know, like mom and dad, quit tracking me. Like obviously but then again, you wouldn't tell them. Okay, but also then again, like when we have children, they're gonna fucking put chips in them, so we'll always know where they are. You know, like it's just gonna be like, you know, yeah. There's gonna be microchips in their fucking wrists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be called. Doomsday uh, is coming, ladies and gentlemen. To buckle up, you know, it's coming. <laughs> Irma number. <laughs> What happens when one hurricane just isn't enough? Hurricane number two. But what happens when the second hurricane just isn't good enough? Welcome to Hurricane Her- Irma Harvey, coming in 2019. I'm calling it. Their baby's coming. He's gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna be a land hurricane. It's not gonna be an ocean hurricane. Bahamas, Florida, they're fine. This is gonna. This shit's gonna. This is gonna hurt. touch down this, in Oregon. This shit's <laughs> gonna touch down in Idaho and make its way across the Midwest. Hey, you know what those are called, Elias? Tornadoes. <laughs> we're talking a hurricane-sized tornado we're, right now. We're talking a Sharknado. It's coming, dude. Stay um, tuned. Yeah, that'll be like episode four of the podcast. <laughs> we're um, delivering it inside of <laughs> Irma Harvey. Uh. But mine, you were actually really close, and it kind of discouraged me because I was just like, oh, no. I'm shit. It was actually 9.35. Woo! Yeah, nice, so you were really close. Good job. Piss. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't pay that much for piss. So, I mean, that makes I mean sense. yeah, but also you got to think if someone's getting that too. Oh, 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 okay. You know what job it has to be? The most unproud for job <laughs> ever. The guy that jacks off the horses think about it that is a job also the people who assemble dildos and like sex toys like think about that. like mommy it's bring your parent to work to school day what do you do uh just tell them i work at arby's uh, like, <laughs> I, I assemble three foot long dildos like we don't want to you don't want me to come to class you know like you know, think about, but seriously, like <laughs> yeah, it's just that a, that dude that jacks off these horses had to have gone to some upper level of school. They're not just letting anyone do that. He's probably like 
has some sort of like, like veterinarian, ve- veterinarian like training. Yeah. Yeah, like the people who graduated with are like you know working with dogs and just yeah. Like, but treating do you think cat that's, cancer and then? But I don't think that's. But I think that's the, 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 that's the farmer's job though. I think it, there's no special person to, to to jack off these horses. I just feel like it just needs like some sort of skill. I mean, <laughs> Elias. I do it, and I have no doctorate, all right? So <laughs> This is a horse we're talking about. Yeah. This is a horse. I mean, a penis is a penis, though. How complicated no, you do can you get? something the wrong way, maybe you'll get kicked in the face or bitten That's or true. That's true. I don't know. But think definitely, of, It definitely is a sucky job. Yeah, but imagine the fucking family reunion Christmas time, like, oh, oh, Stuart, how, how's your job going how's at the, the, uh, the, the farm, is it? What do you do again? Uh, I... Uh, I, I help the horses. <laughs> help the horses do what? I it's, help them. It's like it's like grooming. It's, I, I I help them get off uh, the ground when they're, uh, and then he just like fucking shoves his mouth full of turkey sandwiches and just doesn't say anything for the rest. <laughs> Stuart, why are you why are you crying? Yeah, the next scene is him on the porch fucking drinking eggnog with a cigarette and then just like <laughs> like Stuart, what are you doing? And he's just like. I went to school for eight years for this shit. You know, he's just you know his hands are all calloused and like, you know, <laughs> arthritis is setting in in his left hand. God. Welcome to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. What are we even doing? <laughs> what segment are we on? Well, welcome, I want to say, welcome, all to, right. welcome to jobs that you shouldn't have. Welcome to Elias won that segment. Uh, we're moving on to the next item. All right, here we go. Ready yeah, for this? Bring it. I have to, I have to open this. Uh, so make sure. Don't you just hate it when your banana <laughs> gets bruised? Don't you just hate packing the lunch, putting yourself a nice turkey and a tomato and a lettuce sandwich, a juice box, and a banana, but by the time you get to work and you open your lunchbox, your banana's brown? I hate that. I do. Oh, boy. What can I do to change it? Well... With the original Banana Guard, never worry about your banana withering or being bent out of shape ever again. No way! (laughs) With the original Banana Guard, it's crush-proof container and ensures a perfect banana every time. You can't be serious. (laughs) I can take my banana in my lunchbox and have it not be bruised or damaged? That's literally what I said, Stacy. Why are you repeating it? Well, ever since the accident, I... I, You know what? (laughs) Your banana may not be bruised, but I'm going to hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. (laughs) What a two-go man bruise a banana. (laughs) So it's a banana holder. So it's literally just like a a plastic case (laughs) that you put around your banana. Because, you know, just like bananas getting bruised is just like a serious issue It's like a holster for a banana. Yeah, I would rank it like like Hurricane Irma, World Hunger, bruised bananas. That's... (laughs) People, I don't think, you know, you you talk a big game about like, oh, God, you know, like, oh, sorry. A lot of things that happen in the world. But, hey, I just had serious deja vu right now, and it actually kind of scared me. Wow, uh, that was nuts. I looked at the TV, and then I looked at the computer, and I was like, holy shit, we're in the year 2770. It was nuts. You're on a lunar colony. I'm on a, a I'm a, I'm a. I'm a, what was it? A space detective. You're a space detective. I am a space detective. All right. Get the price. A bruised banana. How much would you pay to protect your bananas? I can get that. (laughs) I can get that shit at Target for probably like, it's honestly, it costs 10 cents to make, but they're upcharging it to like $8. All right. $8 banana protection. Damn it. This shit's like $400. (laughs) (laughs) This shit's like $1,000. It's actually—I forgot to tell you—it's made out of gold. And, Wait, uh, really? It's made out of twenty-four karat gold. Yeah. Wait, no, no, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Why is that a product? <laughs> there's so many things that are products that shouldn't be. Oh man, there's so many people that just shouldn't be. Oh. All right, let's go. All right, my product is hey, hey, Elias. <clears throat> let me ask you something. Have you ever looked down at your balls and went, "There's just too much sperm in here." And you want a good place to store it for later usage? <laughs> well, come down to the California Sperm Bank. Well, we'll take care of your sperm like no one's business. We got a little relaxing spa. We got outdoor, outdoor tennis courts. And we even have a personal massager. Now come down. We'd love to take your sperm. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, sperm banks, bro. 
Okay, they actually... Okay, I thought you were talking about a specific one that has a tennis court. No, I was fucking kidding! Oh, no, I was super invested in, like, the <laughs> sperm bank with a tennis court, dude. What's the point? Is it to just, like... No, a sperm bank. Get the blood rushing? Yeah, how much is a sperm bank? How much is it? Now, the question is, sperm banks are not uh, no, un, not weird. That's yeah. They're, they're a normal thing. But this is to keep your sperm, not to sell it, right? This isn't to sell your sperm. Right, because sperm banks do two different things. They hold sperm and then they sell sperm. Yeah, and then they like put out sperm loans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can take a sperm you, loan out for fourteen percent interest. Yeah, you which is kind of high. Bank you account. can spur a sperm account. You get a sperm mortgage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus, you got sperm tellers. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, yeah. this is a. I just mm-hmm. imagine a Rick and Morty episode, like, like, <laughs> sperm bank. like yeah. come down to sperm and, lo- sperm and loans. <laughs> well, we'll take your account serious and a little funny. You know, like, <laughs> so, uh, but no, this is to just store your sperm. You How much give, does it cost? You give them your sperm and they hold it. It's like a For, bank. It's like okay. a fucking bank account. So, like, if you want to have, like, a kid later or something. Like your yeah, like, if they're just, like, bro, like. Uh, the average man produces billions of sperm a day. Okay. Right? But there's got to be someone that's busting through all of that in a day. So. <laughs> I don't think that's the reason behind sperm. Bank. No, it's not. I it's think not. I honestly think it's because, like, you don't want to have kids now. Well, it's also for people. Well, yeah, you don't want to have kids now, but you. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. I think I was just going to yeah, say the same thing, same thing you were going to yeah. With a better voice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the whole <laughs> class is going to laugh, right? Yeah. And then Elias isn't the funny guy, right? Elias is the guy and that's then, just a nerd, right? And then guess what? <laughs> Susan Catherine is going to ask me the prompt. Yeah. But hey, guess what? You fucking said my joke, and guess who she's going with now? <laughs> you! Now guess who's going to live with the vendetta in the back of the mind going, Hey, don't worry, you're going to be my boss when I get older. And then guess who shoots <laughs> up the workplace? All oh, because you stole my fucking joke! Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again <laughs> Start sobbing Yeah, I was using Catherine, I was, I loved you <laughs> Seriously dude, I hate those people, okay? What people? People that shouldn't exist People who say your joke louder and get all the laughs, man They've caused so like so much sadness <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be honest with you i was that for a long time in high school in high school nick ditto would tell me a joke and then an hour later i would tell that joke to the same group of people or a different group with nick being there like nick would tell me a joke and then i'd be like hey guys did you hear this funny joke and then nick would be like ah! like in the back just fucking pulling his eyes out man you're lucky nick is still your friend man yeah right I, it's nick. crazy uh, so yeah, sperm bank. You store your sperm. I'm gonna say seventy five dollars. Okay. All, All right. right. What else yours? The banana peeler. Uh, yeah. the man- banana storage. The banana know. banana board. The original banana holder was actually five dollars, so you were ah, pretty close. Yeah. You had Eight dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sperm bank is like seven hundred dollars. It varies. Now I didn't write all the fees down. I only wrote the in- initial fee. The initial fee for them to just for you to just be there and them to hold your sperm in the palm of their hand (laughs) can range from a thousand to twelve hundred dollars what there is also an additional fee to keep it stored like like for like x amount of months for eight hundred and fifty dollars and then for seven hundred and some dollars it'll be cryogenically fucking frozen in pamela anderson's body like (laughs) it's just it's unreal there were so many fees that i was getting lost right I don't get it. Why is it so expensive? They put it in a tube and they put it in a fridge. I could do that. We're opening Let's a start sperm bank. bank. <laughs> we're, starting, we're starting a new business. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to turn dick to purple and we're starting and a sperm, sperm bank. bank. Wow. Yeah. Well, next thing you know, we're going to buy a zoo. <laughs> so many forms <laughs> right now. Oh, what yeah. The heck? Th- yeah. $1,000 to $1,200. Isn't that nuts? Bro, I'm going to have to <laughs> look into why it's so expensive. <laughs> nuts. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But it's also, but it's also because there's so many people that can't have kids, so that's where they go to have children. Could you ever do that? Could you ever like, because because a lot of college kids do that. They donate sperm because it pays a lot. Yeah, but then you have a bunch of kids that are yours. That's what I'm saying. Everywhere. Like, could you? Let's okay. <clears throat> Moral thought of the day. 
Could you do that? And, and, and tell me your okay, reason. I mean, this is a moral thought of like centuries. Yeah. But <laughs> moral. <laughs> but we're gonna moral, decide it right now. Yeah, we're, gonna it start, we're gonna shut it down. Just like last time, I sh- I, I, I completely shut down the energy crisis. We're gonna <laughs> yeah, shut down this it. this moral reasoning right now. Two grown men solving ethical issues <laughs> in a room. Uh, I okay. I'm gonna take it from a different approach. Right? Yeah, bring it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Right. Here's why. Right. Yeah. I don't want my genes to go to more than one, like more than a few kids. Yeah. Right? Because like I just, I'll just feel bad. Like I'm not doing the world a favor. <laughs> I, just I, don't have a, you, I don't want you to yeah. have my kids. You said no. You just have you a bunch want... of people. Yeah. You just have a bunch of bunch of kids there who are like half like big heads. Like they've got like <laughs> gig- They've got like caterpillars for eyebrows. <laughs> you know, they have like a constant unibrow. They've got to shave. <laughs> They get this, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not really. I just don't want to do that to the world, you know. I feel like we're making the you're world a better a place. You're yeah, doing a, you're doing them a favor. But I mean, if I'm gonna do it that way, then I, I feel like we should just start doing an IQ test for you and donate sperm. Oh, if it's I below 100, 100 percent agree. If it's below 100, dude, just don't put it in the just don't put it in the population, okay? No, dude. Okay, then that opens up a whole nother. I know you're kind of kidding, but I'm a hundred percent serious. <laughs> When I say that, just to get, just to have a child, I think you should get screened. <laughs> I do. I firmly believe that some people shouldn't have children, and so many people have children just to get like benefits from the government. I have oh, so yeah. many relatives that do that, and I have so many, like I know so many people who just have children to get the checks. Yeah, you shouldn't have children. Yeah, that's awful, dude. Right. So let's have some tests. Oh, yeah. Let's get some screening. Sterilize those. There's 8 billion people in the world. Hey, let's cut back on a few some, you know. <laughs> like, Jesus. We need to slow down. Yeah. The, here's the, dude, It's also this, right? You have to screen them. And, like, one of the questions is, do you do you believe that vaccines cause, aut- cause autism? If you do, just don't kill yourself. I was going to say kill yourself. Oh, Jesus. No, it's Okay. Just don't have kids. You'll die off, and then, like, the stupid gene will go away. That stuff. Oh, my God. Dude, there's, I'm serious, dude. I'm probably offending a lot of people. There's people out there who just, like, won't take their kid to the doctor because they just don't believe in that. I'm like, man, I don't believe in modern medicine. Right? Yeah, dude. There's so many people that don't do anything because of stupid beliefs. Okay, but hey, I'm like, not going to be nice to you because my religion thinks that what you're doing is wrong. So yeah. even though my religion says that I should love everyone, fuck you. But that's yeah. a personal thing. When you're making decisions for ki- for your kids, oh yeah, like it's just like it's a responsibility that not everyone should have. I, I you know I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We're it's saying also... this, and we would probably fail the test. Oh yeah, no, we would. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no we're, we're never losing. Have kids. Yeah. <laughs> we're never having kids. It's also the idea of would you raise your child? Uh, actually, I'm not going to open that can of worms. I, I'll let you guys debate it upon yourselves. It was I was going to say, would you raise your child in the same religion that you have been raised? Right, because I was raised super Christian, like just not even fun. Right, it was just the worst, and I kind of resented a lot of that over the years. And so now, as an adult, I'm like, wow, I, I, I'm thinking about you know if I have a kid, would do I just let them choose? Right, like what they because you know yeah, like, I don't want to do? self I don't want to impose. You know my beliefs on them because 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 when they turn 18 when they leave that's what's going to happen anyway right we all like everyone has that point where they turn 18 they leave home for the first time and it's like oh wow like my beliefs are actually not my beliefs like my thoughts have never been original since i was born right so you have that crisis yeah you know so that's ah, uh, enough with moral talks of the day with the two dudes in the room uh, solving the world's problems with pickles <laughs> 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 this uh, podcast is sponsored by Pickles, right? Uh, when you want a cucumber but you just want something that's a little more gross, what are you gonna get? Hey, go in that jar full of vinegar and shit and pull out a nice juicy pickle. Mmm! A nice pickle. What says, hey, let's satisfy some hunger with sugar and vinegar? <laughs> that's actually salt and vinegar, I think, yeah. Yeah. Dude, pickling is an actual process, and I'm sure everyone knew that, but I didn't know that for the longest fucking time. You didn't know that you could pickle anything? Yeah! Yeah, you can pickle anything. Yeah, what's up with that? You can pickle pigs... Pickle pigs... (laughs) (laughs) Pickles! (laughs) 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 Breathman? (laughs) Breathman? Breathman? There's this Uh, this vine where it's... it's, uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and he's like... He's like... Breath mints? He's trying to say breath mints. And he's like, 
Breath mints? Breath mints? Breath mints? And then you hear breakfast. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, man. Enough with the inside jokes. Let's, uh, yeah. let's move on, actually. The next segment, ladies and gentlemen, is Silly Songs with Tony, where I don't sing a song, but I tell you a story. We're bringing it back, boys and girls. Bringing it back. We got a lot of good feedback from the last one, uh, so we're bringing it back. Yeah, Tony's got enough stories that we could just make 50 episodes <laughs> of just Silly Songs with Tony, so we're keeping this a thing. Uh, yeah, 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 100% correct. Ladies and gentlemen, this story takes place... Uh, uh, before pickles were created no, the story takes place in San Francisco again but not necessarily in San Francisco this story takes place in Oakland this is this is literally the same time you know the same timeline that Nick and I were doing our travels and <clears throat> one day we went over to Oakland and we were over there and again Nick and I love to, to, to give a premise behind this nick and i love uh the oriental culture right we love you know asian food we love the the, the culture the you know the mind the, the mindset and just we, we love everything that, that culture represents and all that kind of stuff so all these cities that we would go to we would go to the chinatowns and we would go to all these areas and we would mm-hmm. hang out there and it was just great right and nick and i well, my favorite food period I, it's one of nick's favorite foods is pho Right, and if you guys know what pho is, um, it's you know what pho is. What's the, what the pho? <laughs> God, I, I don't know what pho yeah. is. All right, so pho for those of you that don't know is basically a, a big bowl with beef broth or whatever other broth you want. It normally, is beef broth, and um, it's <laughs> be- beef broth. It's beef broth. <laughs> it's breakfast uh, with <laughs> with beef broth, and it's thinly sliced beef. But I usually like to get pork or duck or something like that and rice noodles and you know there's some vegetables in there there's cilantro there's you know um uh sprouts yeah sprouts are in it there's pickles yeah (laughs) so we were in oakland and we were we, we were told that there was a chinatown in oakland all right and again just to give you a geographical location oakland is right across the bridge from uh, it's right across the bay from San Francisco. So mm-hmm. we're in Oakland, mm-hmm. and we're walking around. Now, normally a lot of Chinatowns, a lot of little Italy's, a lot of you know, a lot of places like this are very Americanized, mm-hmm. right? There's 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 clear signs before you even get there. It's like Chinatown, straight ahead, you know, like turn around before you still yeah 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 while you still can <laughs> yeah yeah. There's just there's there's sign you know there's you can clearly tell in the architecture that you're entering into whatever you know ethnicity area mm-hmm. that you're going into, right? So, we're walking, and we're walking the streets of Oakland. Nick and I literally have no clue where we're going. We had <laughs> never been to Oakland before. We're just walking, meandering. Mm-hmm. Now, again, that being said, how a lot of these are Americanized, and you can totally tell when you're going into, Nick and I were walking, and out of nowhere, <laughs> we were teleported to Beijing. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I have both Nick and I literally, we were just walking amongst just randomness and we were instantly, instantly Teleported. in Beijing. We looked behind us. There was no, there was no like area of where we were just like, just were. <laughs> we looked, they, dude, there was like literally just someone picked us up and put us into yeah. Chinatown. It made no sense. But this wasn't like any other Chinatown. There weren't cars walking around. This was legit the most accurate representation that I can imagine that China, a lot of areas in China would be, right? Com- like, no cars, only bikes and pedestrians and street vendors. I'm talking street vendors every single foot. Nice. And a lot of it was the, like the, 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 the stores would have like the stores and they would have like samples and they would have all sorts of stuff out in the front, but they would literally just fucking fold out a blanket and just yeah. put all the shit out, right? Nick and I were the only white people in the entire area, <laughs> right? And, and the other thing is that a lot of these areas, you know, in Little Italy, if you go to Little Italy, a lot of stuff is in Italian, but guess what? A lot of stuff is also underneath in English because, hey, guess what? Not a lot of people know how to speak Italian, you know? So not a lot of people in Little Chinatown know how to speak Mandarin. So guess what, Elias? Not a goddamn thing was in English. <laughs> 
Not a thing. The street signs, the restaurants, every single thing was in Mandarin. <laughs> Nothing. Everyone was looking at us like, are you in the right? <laughs> you're, you got lost. You like, look lost, buddy. Yeah, like yeah, you look Chinese, lost. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nick and I are doing our best to try to find a noodle place. We're trying to find a restaurant. We're trying to find a place where we can get some pho. All right? Now, now pho... A little side note, because I know there's one of you that's just like, uh, actually, uh, pho is a Vietnamese dish? Yeah, well, a lot of places serve pho. So we're walking around for a place to serve pho. We're going in and out of these like like really cool like grocery stores. And it's just it's so cool to, to look and experience all this culture that's around us. And we find, but we're so hungry. And we're walking and we're walking and we finally see what we think is a restaurant. Mm -hmm. All right, now we walk in and it's already kind of a weirder vibe. We walk in and there's just a countertop and there's like four or five tables there. And there's a family, a large family that's sitting mm -hmm. there eating, that's just sitting there eating and talking. We walk up to the counter and the guy doesn't speak any English. And so mm -hmm. we go, like, do you speak, you know, do you speak English? And for some reason, you know, I've noticed that English speaking people, when they're dealing with people who don't speak English, guess what happens? They <laughs> raise their voice. Yeah. It's like, do you speak, speak English? English? It's yeah. like, I'm not fucking deaf. Like, <laughs> I don't speak English, but I yeah. can hear you, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're just like, you know, do you speak English? Mm -hmm. And he's just like, hey, you know, just like not saying anything. And so, again, the board, the menu, if you want to call it that, was all in Mandarin. And what we could make out is that what it said is that it said duck, whole half quarter, chicken, whole half quarter, you know, uh, like squid, whole half quarter. Mm -hmm. And so in our small American minds, Nick and I are going, ah, no, I understand. It's like, you know, you mm -hmm. get a whole bowl of duck pho. <laughs> you get a whole bowl of squid pho. Yeah. Like, I get it. No, makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense, <laughs> you know. So Nick and I are talking, we're like, hey, why don't we get a whole bowl of duck pho or duck noodle soup? Like, why don't we just do that? And he's like, yeah, it makes, you know, let's do that. So we look at the guy and we're like, can we get, and we start like pointing to the, the thing and he's just like, oh, and he walks over. He understands what we're saying. Or at least we think he does. Mm -hmm. And he walks over to the window where there is a, there is a display case that we don't see. <laughs> he pulls out. A live fucking duck. Oh. And it's like, <laughs> and he's like holding it by the neck, and it's just like, <laughs> it sounds more like a turkey, but I'm like, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> you know, just like, it's losing its mind. And he looks at us amongst this noise of a screaming full adult duck. And in English, he points at the duck and goes, You a chup? And Nick oh and I, God. Nick and I are in shock because oh we're like, God. clearly this duck has nothing to do with us. Like, clearly this duck, <laughs> it has, it just, he's, he's, he got, he got to take, he got like a call in order. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, was, yeah, like this duck has nothing to do with us. Yeah. But he points at the duck and he's just like, you want chump? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And without even hesitating, this bro throws the duck onto the counter <laughs> and chops this motherfucker's head off oh, in in like the quickest fashion I've ever seen. Like, you want chop? Yes. You know? Oh my gosh. And then as he as he cut the head off, it all it all became real. It all became real. Nick and I were just like, what the fuck did we just do? Where are we? Like, oh my god! Like we're looking around at the walls, we're just like like grabbing people, we're like, do you know who I am? Like we're just like, like, where am I? I? What year is it? No, what year is it? It all becomes real. Like uh, like we have we're so in over our heads, Elias. <laughs> like we're so, these two little white kids, like, I know culture, because I've been to little Chinatown. <laughs> and here we are in the heart of Beijing, where no one no one else knows anything about um, like who we are what we're saying yeah, where duck we're rights like, like don't even exist yeah, yeah and we're just like why don't you understand me you know yeah so he he, he cuts the head off this duck and he starts pulling the feathers off of it <laughs> and he puts and he turns around and he opens this big metallic kind of case and he pops it open like steam comes out and he just throws the duck in there right mm. and he shuts it and he turns a timer and this dude turns around and is like awkwardly smiling at us for like 16 minutes. Like he's just like, <laughs> and Nick and I are like still trying to grasp on everything that just happened. <laughs> so we're walking around and you no, know, we're sitting down at the, uh, in the area 
And uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, we're sitting in the restaurant and yeah, no, this is a picture of Nick Ditto around a bunch of pickles. <laughs> What the heck? Yeah, no. Yeah. What are the chances? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he just Sorry, died. I got a call from Nick Ditto, ladies and gentlemen. I got a little distracted. So, all of a sudden, this timer goes off, and he turns around, and he opens the lid, and he pulls the duck out, and it smells amazing. Mm. And it's bronze. This machine had, had cooked the duck, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we thought cooked the duck. And it smells unbelievable. We're just like, yeah. oh, bro, like, you know what? This actually might be a blessing in disguise because if that cooked the duck, we can just eat the duck. Yeah. Right? Perfect. Yeah, no big deal. So the dude cuts up the whole rest of the duck, organs and all, and slides it into a styrofoam container. Oh, God. Slides it over the counter and in English goes, 1650. <laughs> this dude, oh, I swear, God. knew English the whole time. <laughs> And no one said anything. <laughs> this dude walked in, saw our stupid little white asses, and was just like, oh, bro, like, I'm about to have some, like... That's so much fun. Yeah. I'm about to have so much... These dudes are about to buy a full duck. You know, like, you know, <laughs> he got the hiccups. Oh, he made me laugh too hard. <laughs> so we pay the guy, and we sit down, and again, we're thinking we can eat this. So we open the styrofoam container, and it smells great. And Nick and I both pick up this big, fat chunk of meat... And we just kind of toast, and we're like, all right, man, like, live in La Vida Loca, you know? Take a big bite, mm-hmm. blood, Ugh. and, like, organs are all still in this duck. Ew. It didn't cook the duck. It just bronzed and cooked the outside meat. And instantly, I'm, like, throwing up. That's gross. Right? Like, I'm just like, oh, my, like, oh, my gosh. And Nick's yeah. just like, what? Like, oh, my gosh. And as we say that... The family that was sitting over there, yeah. one woman gets up, walks over to us and goes, you know, I want to do like an Asian impersonation, but some bastard's going to be like, you know, that really offended me. And I'll be like, hey, guess what? In 2004, you would have thought that shit was fucking hilarious, <laughs> yeah. you know, but the lady walks over and she says, hey, y- you boys aren't from around here, are you? <laughs> and I go, Really, miss? What, what What gave it away? What, what gave it away? What gave it away? Huh? Am I wearing a shirt that says I love New York? Like, what's happening here? You know? And she's just like, I'm like, oh, clearly, you know, we're not from around here. Mm. And she's like, well, uh, in Asian culture, we, you know, buy the whole duck and we take it home and we prepare it. You know, oh. like, we take out all the organs. We take out all this stuff. We drain it and we cook it and we put yeah. it in food. Right? So that made complete sense to me. But guess what? We're living in a hostel with no way of doing that. So we have a uh. whole fucking duck <laughs> just in a styrofoam container. <laughs> we go back. And at that point, oh, God, at that time, I'm afraid you're going to hiccup and throw up all over the place. Yeah. At that point, we were actually staying at this hotel right, in Oakland. And we go back to the hotel and we have this duck and we put it in our in our room and we're just, you know, like, hey, let's forget about it. You know, let's go out and get some pizza or something. Like, you know, uh-huh. what, like, whatever. We go out and get pizza. And as the rowdiness of the night ensued, we knocked over the styrofoam container mm. of duck. And we we're trying to pick all the pieces back up. We threw it away. Fast forward like a day later. We're on the train going to, like, Denver. And I get a, and we get a call. And then the... And the, and the, and the, and the uh, Basically, we have left the head of the duck oh in the god. hotel. Oh my god! <laughs> and so the cleaning ladies were just like, "I just need a meal, meal, <laughs> Like you know, like you know, what? that was pretty insensitive. I just assumed they were Hispanic. You know, yeah, that's really yeah, yeah. Fuck me, right? You know, we're gonna get that's flagged bad. by the FDA for this that's or right, something. Man. You know, I don't uh, even have to like sabotage you. You're just gonna sabotage yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, <laughs> I'm gonna one have grown to man doing a podcast. And uh, one grown man doing a podcast from prison. You know. Uh, <laughs> So she like she, they thought that there was like some sort of séance or devil magic that was going on in here, oh, and no, it was just two God. grown men buying a duck in Little Chinatown. <laughs> so yeah, that's my story, ladies and gentlemen. That's hope hilarious. you enjoyed it. Yeah, hope you didn't get too offended. You bunch of snowflakes. <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, honestly, it sounds like a really cool story, and this is why like I really support just like going out of the country, man. Yeah. Just like for once, just like I know you can do it here in the states, but it's harder. But just like see how it feels. To be the only one of your kind. Like, yeah, it was nuts. 
It was yeah. nuts. I mean, that's how my, my parents came were immigrants from Jordan, and that's how they felt when they came to Chattanooga, Tennessee. <laughs> Chattanooga, Tennessee. You don't look the same color as I do. Yeah. And where just, the hell are you from? Right, just trying to talk with people, just trying to understand culture. They were just like so confused. Like they had to, they had to go to like a, a white church. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. They had to go to a white church, and they just like didn't know how those worked. They're so different from churches yeah. in Jordan. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's a great experience. Yeah, if you have the chance, travel. But, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, but that, that concludes Silly Songs with Tony, where I don't sing a song, but I tell you a story. Woo. Woo. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Two Grown Men Doing a Podcast in Their Room. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Elias. I am Tony. But hey, be looking for podcast number three coming out next week. If you like this podcast, make sure to like, share, subscribe, do your thing. But hey, if you don't want to, like I understand. Like There's a lot of stuff going on. It's okay. But yeah. if so, hey, make sure to support what we're doing. But I'm Tony. I'm Elias, like we and said, we already did this. And we already <laughs> did this, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>